And the subject of today, and before, actually, before I say that, I want to say this to all of our listeners. I want to really thank you for listening to this program and for all your comments, all the questions that you send in. Robert and I were over at the Phoenix Open, the golf tournament, just a little while ago. And this gentleman comes up and he says, I just, I, I'm sorry to bother you, but I just want to thank you for your radio show because I listen to it every week and I learn so much about it. And I kept saying, I'm so sorry to bother you. Well, um, let me tell you this. If anybody wants to come up to me and say thank you and thank you, thank me for, for the radio show and that they've learned something and that they're putting it into practice, that is the last thing that is bothering me. I welcome it and uh, I really appreciate all the great comments that, that everybody sends in. So thank you for that and thank you for listening. So our show today is about the comeback. It's all about the comeback. It's about perseverance. It's about what do you do when you have this big setback? Because if you're in business or you're thinking about going into business, rest assured, I will guarantee you that there will be setbacks. Some people call them failures. I don't really call them failures because if you have a failure, you learn, you grow, hopefully, and that grows your business. So there's often a um, common theme out there, and I've heard it before. They say, failure is not an option. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's a bunch of BS, blue sky. Because if you're in business, if you're going into business, if you're just living life, there are setbacks. And today's guests are going to talk about how they overcome their own setbacks. For me, many years ago, long before Rich Dad, I had what I would call my own meltdown. And all I wanted to do, it was around business, it was personal, it was like my whole world came crashing down, and all I wanted to do was sleep. All I wanted to do was stay in bed every morning. And what it took for me to come back and to overcome all of the things I just did not want to do, there was one thing I did. And the one thing I did is very similar to what our first guest is talking about as well. So we're going to go into that. So I would like to welcome to our show our very first guest. She's an incredible woman. Her name is Mel Robbins. She's the author. She's a speaker. She's a TV personality and coach. Her TED Talk is called How to Stop Screwing Yourself Over. Sounds pretty interesting. And it has over 10 million views. I've watched it several times. It's fabulous. I highly recommend it. How to Stop Screwing Yourself Over. And she is the author of The Five Second Rule, Transform Your Life, Work, and confidence with everyday courage. So Mel, welcome to the show. Kim, thank you so much for uh, the opportunity to speak with you and introduce your audience to the five second rule. Well, I appreciate it because I know you're just about to go on stage and uh, you took this time to be with us. So I appreciate it. I know our listeners appreciate it. If you would just um, briefly tell your story because it's quite an amazing story from where you went, where you were to where you've come to today. Yeah, you got it. And, um, you know, I found myself at the age of 41, I'm, I'm almost 49 now, but at the age of 41, I found myself facing a setback. And my husband was in the restaurant business, and the first one did really well, and so we thought, this is amazing, and we didn't follow any of your and your husband's advice. And we put <laughs> Shame on you. Shame on you. <laughs> and we, yeah, exactly. And we put in our kids' college savings. And we opened a second and tried to get a third open, and the second one failed miserably. And by the time uh, that second restaurant was closed, it was an $800,000 loss. The entire home equity line gone, the entire college savings, everything gone. We were facing bankruptcy. And then on top of all of this, I had just uh, lost a job, and so I found myself unemployed. And, you know, the interesting thing about life is when when you get hit with a setback, whether Mm -hmm. it's a cancer diagnosis or a relationship that ends or you get fired or your business fails, we all react differently to it. My husband would spring out of bed and he would go meet his business partner and they would try to solve things. And I was like you. I would wake up every morning and I would lie in bed and I would think about our problems. I'd think about the lien on the house. I'd think about the fact that we were fighting all the time. I'd think about feeling like a loser and how embarrassed and, and, and how much shame that I felt. Right, so, right. For, for me, it was my, my self-confidence just went in the toilet. There was like yes, so and, much self-doubt. Yes, totally. Am I worth anything? It was, it was horrific. And then the problem is that's what you need to change. You need confidence. You need courage. And yet at the, you don't have any. And so, 
you know, for months I struggled with what I call the knowledge action gap, which is I knew the small things that I could be doing. I could be getting up on time. I could be getting to the gym. I could be looking for a job. I could be having the tough conversations. I could be reaching out to people, but I wasn't doing it. I was thinking. You knew what you should be doing, but you weren't doing it. Correct. So the way that the story turned around is I invented what at the time seemed like the stupidest little thing to help me beat my habit of hitting the snooze alarm. And that was I started inspired by NASA and their countdown to launch a rocket. I decided I would try to launch myself out of bed every morning by counting backwards like a rocket launch, five, four, three, two, one. And the first time I used it, it worked. The second time I used it, it worked. The next time I used it, it worked. And then I started to notice something absolutely remarkable. It's kind of one of those insights that once you start to think about it, you realize it's been underneath your nose the entire time. All day long, I was facing five-second moments where my instincts, my inner wisdom, knew exactly what I should be doing. I should be pushing through the dread and working on my resume. I should self-monitor and change my tone so I was more supportive of my husband, Chris. I should be getting outside and exercising. I should be, you know, reaching out and not isolating. I should be putting down the booze and not drinking so much. And if I didn't move, Kim, in five seconds flat, my brain would take over and I would get trapped in my thoughts. And so I started to play around with this five, four, three, two, one, and I started using it everywhere. And and you know, you just you just you just mo- you just used a very good word, move. You said you had to move. Yes. So for me, when I was going through my meltdown and I had to get out of bed, my thing, I just kept saying to myself, just go do something, do something. And so for you, you yes. started just get out of bed, get a, figure out a way to get out of bed, which is great because in order to make change in your life, you've got to take little tiny steps, right? Yes. Little tiny here, steps. Here's, here's what's remarkable, Kim. So I first shared my little secret weapon, the five-second rule, because the truth is by making five-second decisions, by waking up in those moments where normally I'd stop and think and start doubting myself and going five, four, three, two, one, not only do we claw out of debt and completely change and transform our lives, go on to launch and sell two companies, I went on to, you know, kind of soar in the media business and become a best-selling author, but I shared this little trick on the TED stage. And... Since then, not only has the talk been viewed by more than 10 million people, but we've heard from more than 100,000 people around the world who have used my simple 54321 countdown technique to do everything from uh, quit their jobs and find financial freedom, to change their marriages and improve them, to we know of 11 people, Kim, who have stopped themselves from committing suicide by using this technique. Now, one of the things I want to quickly explain is that the counting backwards is essential. It's actually a form of metacognition, which is a fancy word that means you can trick your brain. When you count backwards, five, four, three, two, one, you actually interrupt your bad habits of overthinking, of self-doubt, and you switch what part of your brain is active. By counting five, four, three, two, one, you activate your prefrontal cortex. So not which is the so, part of- so you count backwards. What happens if I count one, two, three, four, five? It doesn't work because you can keep going, and you also count up a lot in your life, so it's not something that requires focus. So if I'm sitting here and I'm going, okay, so I know I need to get to the gym. Yes. And I, so it's, are you telling me it's as simple as just counting five, four, three, two, one? Yeah, then move. And then move. But that's a key point. You got to yeah. move. You got to go do something. You got to move. <laughs> well, the thing, the thing that's different about this is that most of the time, what most of us do is we try to switch our thoughts. That doesn't work. But if you, if you actually count backwards and activate the part of the brain that through, you know, thousands of research studies, we know that it's the prefrontal cortex that's, that's, activate, that's active when you're doing strategic thinking, when you're changing behavior, when you're forming new neural pathways. And so what you've actually done is you've done a little hack in your own mind to activate the part of the brain that makes change easy. And by the time you get to one, it's a prompt. Now, there are, there are examples of this being used all over. Special Forces uses this to align a squadron and get them ready to start an activity. Go into an elementary school, and you can see an entire assembly. And the, the method that they use is they start going five, four, three, two, one. An entire assembly of kids will stop talking and get focused. Now, I've used this tool to not only change behavior, I've also used it, Kim, to cure myself of 20 years of anxiety. 
Once again, this is Kim Kiyosaki. I'm sitting in for Robert Kiyosaki, hosting the show today, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. We are talking to Mel Robbins, author, speaker, TV personality, and coach. She is the author of The Five Second Rule, Transform Your Life, Work, and Confidence with Everyday Courage. Her website is melrobbins.com. So, Mel, this is fascinating. The, the Five Second Rule. Here, here's what I've been working on lately, and I'm, I'm watching my thoughts a lot. Okay, yeah. so we all have these thoughts that beat us up, negative thoughts, things that thoughts that don't support us. So let's say I have a negative thought. Are mm-hmm. you saying if I count, I, I catch the thought, and if I count five, yeah. four, three, two, one, change it? Yeah, totally. If you go five, four, three, two, one, the moment you catch yourself doubting yourself, you've activated again the part of the brain that holds on to new behavior, the prefrontal cortex, and so the positive thought will actually anchor you because you're now using the part of the mind that creates new behavior. And over time, if you keep interrupting those patterns of self-doubt, of procrastination, of overthinking, and you 54321, what happens is the 54321 becomes what researchers call a starting ritual. A starting ritual is a tool that you can use to trigger long-term behavior change. So, so procrastination you- procrastination is huge. I mean, it's huge. So yeah. I, I'm talking to my girlfriend this weekend, and she says to me, she goes, you know, I realized why I didn't take action for so long. She said, I was too comfortable. So let me ask you this. She was too comfortable. Her, her business was going well. Her relationship was well. They were Financially, they were set. So let me ask you this. Do you think you have to go through this huge setback to to propel yourself to come back how do you no, how, how I do don't you at all how how would you do that how what would you say to her I, I guarantee you kim that she would admit to you she would admit to me she would admit to this audience that even though she was comfortable there was something deep in her heart that was telling her urging her pushing her the shoulds yes the, the, the inner wisdom she wasn't listening to it You see, your inner wisdom is there all the time, no matter how good things are, no matter how bad things are. And this is a tool that you can use to wake yourself up to your inner wisdom so that even though you're flying high, look, you and I both know this, every stage of your life, every stage of your business, every stage of your marriage requires a different you. And if you want to get to the next level, what you've done to get to where you are is not going to be enough to get you to where you want to go. And so this is a tool where you can start to truly tune into that inner wisdom, those nudges, those shoulds, you know, those things that are aligned with your goal that you, instead of moving forward in very small ways, you stop, you think. Her book is The Five Second Rule, and we're talking about the comeback. We're talking about what do you do in life when you have a setback, and how do you overcome all those things you should do but you really don't want to do so for me, in my life, every day, there's a setback. So what we're learning today is really helping me because I can use this in every way possible, in relationships, in business, in my own fitness. And uh, that's going to be our next guest. So today is all about the comeback and how do you overcome all those things that get in your way that sometimes you just don't want to deal with, but you know you need to deal with. And our stories today are about how you come back from these setbacks. So our next guest, and Mel, thank you for staying for this part of the show. Our next guest is Lauren Janai. She's an entrepreneur and fitness expert. She is the co-founder of CrossFit. And I know a lot of you know of CrossFit. It's an international phenomenon. And she has now started in her new adventure, and she is the founder of Manifest. Her website is bemanifest.com. And our other guest is Mel Robbins. She is the author, speaker, TV personality, and coach. She is the author of The Five Second Rule, Transform Your Life, Work, and Confidence with Everyday Courage. So, Lauren, let me start with you. Co-founder of CrossFit. Now you're into a new business venture. Tell us a little bit about your story because you had quite quite the setback. Yes. And now you've got the comeback. Yeah, I love this topic. It's um, so apropos to my story and Manifest story. Um, I spent a good 15 years of my life um, with my, at the time, husband building CrossFit. Um, It was a labor of love for both of us. Uh, It was all-consuming, as anybody who runs a business knows. Um, He and I both had an extreme passion for our work and built 
CrossFit over that 15 years. Internationally. Yeah. I know a lot of people around the world who are who are participating in CrossFit. Can you just explain real quickly what it is for those who may, the few that may not know who it, what it so is? It's so funny that it's so popular now because, <laughs> you know, 15, 20 years ago, it was like, hey, have you heard of CrossFit? No, what's that? <laughs> now it's like, oh, yeah, CrossFit is a uh, very sticky con- fitness concept um, that is uh, – kind of redefine the fitness industry. We developed a program that is high intensity exercise that um, transforms athletes into their peak performance. It's um, it's a lot of fun. It's community based. Very community based. Yeah. yeah that's what my, my girlfriends are it's liking part about of, it. Exactly. It's part of um, why it's so successful. And, um, and what happened? Well, that's interesting. Um, there was a turn of events um, where... We had a core ethos with our, our, our business of uh, organic growth. We really waited and um, poised ourselves to take advantage of opportunity as it arised mm-hmm. instead of trying to force things. Right. And at some point, um, we had outside companies um, interested in sponsorship and uh, Reebok got involved with CrossFit as a um, sponsor of the CrossFit Games. And I believe, I feel that it, it was that kind of growth was inorganic. It kind of, a b- bunch of money was thrown in. It propelled CrossFit um, on TV. We were on ESPN. And the growth became a little bit inorganic. Okay. And, um, you, and so you and your husband had a different absolutely. philosophy. Absolutely. Okay. And there was a split? Yeah. And, and it's interesting because the, the um, that split in philosophy happened at the same time that we were going through personal issues. And okay. You know, I found myself in a position where it was really a hard decision to make, but I found felt that I was no longer serving my company by being a part of it. Mm-hmm. And my participation in the company was no longer valuable because of the personal stresses that were going on in my marriage. So you sold your... Correct. Your, so you sold your part of the business. You're now out of the business. Right. You and your husband have split. Yes. And I, you know, and I got a big chunk of change for selling. Yeah, good, good for you. You well, better. <laughs> well, and you know what's funny? People, a lot of people would look at my life and go, "Oh, she got all this money. She got paid out. She's got, you know, she's she's set. She she should be happy." And honestly, you can't put a dollar amount mm-hmm. on your life's work. Yeah. Well, your purpose. Your I mean, purpose that's your purpose. In life. Exactly. All of a sudden, that disappears. That's probably one of the hardest things that disappears. If if you lose sense of your purpose, it that's a, that can be devastating. Devastating. Yeah. And and I, I didn't quite realize it. Um. You know, because on the outside, you know, I have four beautiful children. I was able, thank God, to be able to focus on raising them. So mm-hmm. I did have purpose in that. Yeah. And I think that saved me yeah. in, in a lot of respects. And where was the shift that happened that you start? You started to create this business called Manifest? Well, I was in a funk and I wanted to start moving. There you go. <laughs> you needed Mel's five second rule. Well, it's interesting because I used it without knowing it. Yeah. Um, and, How did you do that? Um for me, I knew I had to move to feel better, and mm-hmm. I didn't want to do CrossFit because it was really hard. Yeah, to go back there. Go, going sure. back for many reasons. Sure. I tried different things. Nothing worked for me. And I I realized I was in a position that so many people are in where they want to do something but don't know how to start. Yeah. And for me, I got I had a um, I had some exercise equipment in my garage. I said, like, you know, I'm, I have a rower. I'm going to row 500 meters today. So you did something. I did something. So, so Mel, yes. for people that are just, just, just as Lauren's saying, for people that don't know what to do, you know, they know they want to do something or they don't know how to start. They don't know how to start their business. Yep. They don't know how to do yep. How does your five second rule work? And, and, and the five second rule being you count down five, four, three, two, one, and then you take an action. Yes. And by counting backwards, for those of you just tuning in, you actually switch the gears in your brain and you awaken your prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain that helps you change. What I would recommend is uh, the moment you're, this is how you start using it. The moment your alarm rings in the morning, five, four, three, two, one, get out of bed. Do not hit the snooze alarm. Do not lie there and sleep. Um, Then if you can find just 10 minutes, that's all I'm asking for. 10 minutes before you look at your phone, to sit down and plan out two things, two things you could do today that would actually move you one step closer to the things that are important to you. That might be more time with your kids. It might be sitting down and looking through your finances instead of putting your head in the sand. It might be making one phone call 
that, that is going to connect you with somebody that could give you some advice about how you get started on the business. The point is we want you to get out of your head and into action. And by using 54321 to get out of bed, to not look at your phone, to carve out 10 minutes first thing in the morning, I swear to you that if you do that for just one week, you will be shocked at how much more momentum, control, optimism, confidence that you feel because you will be seeing yourself one decision at a time starting to take control of your life through action instead of stopping to think and holding yourself back. And, and you using s- the 54321 will prime your brain to work with you instead of against you. And you said to get out of your head. And I know for you, Mel, I know for Lauren, I know for myself, when we go through these setbacks, that little voice is chattering away all the negative thoughts, all the I'm not worth this and all the self-doubt. So if I have a negative thought, okay, or let me, mm-hmm. just, let, me, let me ask it this way. What's the difference between using your five-second rule to take action versus using the five-second rule and reacting emotionally? Because sometimes I'm on automatic and I go five, four, three, two, one, I want to react. Right. Well, you can use the rule for self-monitoring. So if you're somebody that gets triggered easily or, you know, I use it a lot to correct my tone when I'm at home because mm-hmm. I might have a tough day or a hard day or I'm, or I'm just like rattled because of travel, I'll five, four, three, two, one if I feel my emotions or I feel frustration rising up. And be careful. You can teach this to your kids. It works like a charm, but they'll start using it on you. <laughs> Mom, <laughs> watch the tone. <laughs> so is that similar, Lauren, to what you did in terms of taking the action? Absolutely. And, and this this uh, five-second rule is um, very much um, the approach that we use in Manifest. And, and, and the way I vocalized something similar, uh-huh. Mel, is um, with Manifest, it's just show up. And we shape behavior. Our facilitators are trained to shape behavior. So we deal a lot with these inner voices. Mm, great. Because great. that is the stuff that keeps people from doing things. It's what keeps you from – people well, – even if they do show up, they, they – oh, I didn't do en- enough reps. I didn't – I'm not good enough. Like, oh, I ate bad yesterday. All these negative um, things happen in their brains that create failure. And I decided because I had lost my purpose when I lost my company – to chart my own progress through pulling myself out of that dark place and using all of those steps to create something for all the people who suffer the same problems. Yeah, perfect. And and I, I love what you're saying. And, and Mel, too, because I, when, I, when I go to the gym, because I have a trainer and I have this argument in my head sometimes. It's like, oh, I don't really want to go. Oh, mm-hmm. I don't want to go. I just, just get in the car, Kim. No, I don't want to go. Da, 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 da. So now what you're saying, Mel, is I can just go five, four, three, two, one, and move. Yeah. Don't even, really don't have, because it's a very it's long really, argument I have. It's a waste of time. <laughs> yes, no, it's really, you'll just be like five, four, three, two, one, and you'll find yourself walking. And, and you'll get to the point, people first start using it to push themselves to do things like get to the gym, get up on time push through procrastination and get and get started on the work. But then you'll start to use it for the mental battles. You'll start mm. to use it to go to war against your attitude and your self-doubt. And for me, it was anxiety, 20 years on Zoloft. And I started using this about five years ago to interrupt the patterns of worry and anxiety. And I haven't had a panic attack. Heck, I barely worry about anything in five years. I've been off meds. I mean, it's Amazing. It is amazing. And I I really want to thank you for your time because I know you're just about to go on stage. But again, Mel Robbins, her book is The Five Second Rule, Transform Your Life, Work and Confidence with Everyday Do When You Have a Failure or a Setback. And I don't like to use the word failure because even in failures, you learn and you grow. But what happens when you have a setback? What happens if you lose a business or lose a business partner? What if you lose a marriage? How, what happens when you find yourself in a place that you really don't want to be? How do you get yourself out of it? And that's what we're talking about today. So if you're listening and you have something that you need to overcome or you're in a place you not necessarily want to be, how do you get through that and thrive through it? Not just overcome it, but then prosper through it. I want to thank Mel Robbins for being with us today. She is the author, speaker, TV personality, and coach. She is the author of The Five Second Rule, Transform Your Life, Work, and Confidence with Everyday Courage. And I highly, highly recommend that book because with five seconds, five, four, three, two, one, go, you can actually transform your life. I know it sounds really, really simple, but I think it is that simple. And her TED Talk is How to Stop Screwing Yourself 
Our other guest here with us is Lauren Janai. She is entrepreneur and fitness expert. She is a co-founder of CrossFit, which many of you I know are familiar with. And she is the founder. She's launching a new adventure, new business called Manifest, which is a physical fitness studio as well as an app that anybody throughout the U.S. can get and have access to fitness coaches. And especially we're talking, Lauren, about the mindset and how important that is. So for you, Lauren, you had quite the setback, basically being bought out of your business, which you was your baby. That Correct. was your baby. Also, it was the end of your marriage. Mm-hmm. So what was that like? I mean, what is it like to, to kind of lose that? Per- I mean, I, I see losing a business more as losing that purpose, losing a marriage and kind of I've been there, too, where your whole world kind of comes crumbling down. How was what was that like and how did you get through that? Uh, well, it's funny. I I was a person who never had experienced depression or anxiety. Um, and I actually kind of thought that wasn't a real thing. And then, <laughs> yeah. then I found yeah. myself uh, depressed and having panic attacks and, uh, you know, in a dark place. And, and it was very uncomfortable for me. Um, and I remember distinctly having a thought like, I just want to be happy. And I was like, okay, well, what makes me happy? And it started with little things. Like I would look at a piece of jewelry and it sparkled. And I was like, that makes me happy. Nice. That little thing. And then I started practicing being happy um, because I knew, I just, I think from being a coach for mm-hmm. so many years, I, I knew um, I had some skill set in, in changing behavior and shaping behavior. And I saw that I wanted, my, my target behavior was happy. And so I just started doing things that made me happy. Little things. Little. 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 And what what did you learn coming out of this? What did you learn? That those little tiny things are really important and that you have to take time with yourself and practice. And whether it's practice um, exercise, whether it's practice business, whether it's practice changing that internal dialogue, you have to you have to do it on a regular basis. And it's not a big deal. And so how did the how did the idea of manifest come come about? Well, I, was there an aha moment or there there was um I mean your whole your whole life has been fitness and you yes. I, mean, I know people can't see you but here you are you're you're the you're the epitome of, of fitness and health and well one of the reasons CrossFit was so successful is uh, my ex-husband and I had a mentality of the uh, only way to fail is to quit mm. And we were very tenacious Mm -hmm. and we weren't going to stop because we felt like we had something that was very important to share with people. Um, So from uh, from that perspective, um, it kind that that kind of slapped me in the face after quite a few years of depression and anxiety and pulling myself out. And I realized that I still had that calling. I still had a purpose. Mm -hmm. That purpose never went away. And I started, um, it just kind of, the pieces fell together for me because I realized that CrossFit kind of fell into a niche of um, elite performance for elite athletes. And um, as I said previously, initially our goal with with CrossFit was very much all-encompassing health health concerns and working with everyday normal people. And I was um, kind of struck in like, oh my God, those people are still not being served appropriately by the health industry mm-hmm. and the fitness industry. And so I was like, I can, I still have, I still have that purpose just because I lost my company, lost my marriage, just because I've been depressed. Um, I still have purpose and I need to build something again. So, so you mentioned that the thing only, only failure is to quit. Yeah. Did that, did you feel like a quitter at the time when you were being no. brought out of your business? No. I didn't. Um, and I, that's probably part of why I went into depression and anxiety. It was such a disconnect from mm-hmm. who I was. Yeah. The place I was was not me. And as soon as I realized I still had purpose and I still had um, I had information and knowledge to share that was so, so important to such a vast majority of people, it was like every the, the skies opened for me right. at that point because that, then then I I used those little pieces of happiness along the way, and that allowed the doors to open or the insight to like hey you're not done honey you guys so, keep keep going persevere. So as you're building your business now called Manifest, mm-hmm. um, you have setbacks every day, right? Yeah. How do you deal with them? I How do you deal that. with them on a daily basis? I love them. I love setbacks. You love them because I learn. I also um, uh, so for example, give me a, give me an example. Well, so what what I did with uh, manifest because I was in a new, unique position to really create a new concept in business. 
um, I created a um, test facility with no intention of making money. Okay. I just wanted to test the th- the, my theories and work with a small group of people so that I could learn, so that I could have these um, you know, pitfalls to learn where things weren't working and, and learn from those uh, experiences and fix those things so that you know, as the company um, blossomed, there would be less, uh, you know, pitfalls. So, so you kind of look at every setback as like a test. It's a test. Absolutely. It's just, it's a, it's a test of life. Absolutely. And I, I mean, I think that's, um, I have that throughout my life. You know, I don't, I don't see failure. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. So you're It's new, opportunity. So you said it's a new concept. How is it new? What's different about manifest from all the other fitness crazes out there? Well, I, I think the most significant thing is that we do um, understand and work with people in terms of behavior. And the thing in the fitness industry is, um, I one of my realizations is that the fitness industry is all targeting the wrong end goal. They're trying to sell memberships. Um, it's about, you know, it's about peak performance. It's all these things. And the thing that really, really matters, in my opinion, is adherence. Because any pro- fitness program, um, if you just do it, you're going to get benefit. Adherence being being consistency? Con- uh, doing doing the things that will lead you to being healthy and fit. And um, and, and manifest that is um, we, we deal with nutrition, but we don't deal with it like, oh, you have to be on this diet. We, we assess where you are and we take little tiny baby steps. Yeah. You know, and that's how and that is what because I'm, I'm studying a lot of of how people do transform and what mm-hmm. leads to transformation and what leads to true change. Yep. And true transformation does not happen through just information. No, it, there has to be a process. And it, that process has to be little tiny, tiny steps to really affect change. Absolutely. Is that what you're doing? Absolutely. There, and, and, and I realize this because I have all this information. I try to give it to people like, oh, here's all here's the secret of the universe. But if I put, put pilot in front of you, you won't get it. Right. But if I do it in little tiny pieces and little tiny steps, then a person's able to actually internalize, learn from it. And actually what happens is they become self-reliant. They don't need me yes. as a coach anymore, Yes, which is Another goal of Manifest is to teach people to be reliant Which on themselves. Which is very similar to the Rich Dad philosophy. Absolutely. The Rich Dad philosophy is we want people to educate themselves so yes. that they can go out there and be successful and be financially free yes. and have your businesses. And you don't need necessarily to be, you don't need to be hooked to us. Right. Once again, this is Kim Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. We're talking to Lauren Janai. She's an entrepreneur and fitness expert co-founder of CrossFit and now a new business venture called Manifest, as well as an app that people can use to have access to live fitness coaches. We were also talking to Mel Robbins. She is the author of The Five Second Rule, speaker, TV personality. And the subject today is the comeback, coming back from setbacks. How do you overcome all of these problems and negative I negative things that happen in your life where you go, I just don't want to deal with it anymore. I'd rather just crawl under a rock and crawl under my bed and not face it. Well, we're facing it. And Lauren is a great example of someone who has had a big setback and is now really thriving through this. And one of the things you said, Lauren, very, very important is you don't even think of a failure as a failure, which is same as I do, because you keep learning and you keep growing. Is that part of the philosophy in your fitness yes, mentality? Yes, absolutely. And I think fitness is a, is a huge um, area where people feel failure and a lot of inter- internal dialogue starts happening that's negative. Yeah. And um, so with Manifest, we, w- we want to change that around. Uh, we, we have participants come in and they are so used to, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm, you know, I shouldn't be here. I don't look good. It, this I got on the scale and I'm too fat, whatever. And we deal with all of those issues incrementally over time and train people to know, lo- to, to, you, you showed up today. Yeah. High five. Just, just show up. You showed up. Just show up. And, you know, um, it's something that Mel talks about in her book, The Five Second Rule. She talks about motivation as being a bunch of garbage. Absolutely. What do you, what do you, <laughs> what do you say to that? Because everybody's like, I got to get motivated. When I get motivated, then that'll, that'll, That'll make all the difference. Well, and, and it's it's a vicious cycle because we're so used to being motivated and doing something. It's like the January first in the fitness industry. Like, yes, we're going to go to the gym. My I'm motivated. Gym's, my gym's always packed in January. Right, and then and this goes back to shaping adherence behavior. The gym, the people don't adhere to showing up 
after January and, and, you know, they don't get what they need. Um, and it's a huge failure of the fitness industry to not deal with that. But they should be celebrated for showing up. Yeah. So and what's wrong with motivation? I think because it is something we're so used to that high, we started something and then that fade off that it, it, it's it we're used to that. We're used to starting something and being exciting and then it not following through with it. And be, so that I think the motivation becomes associated with that fall off as yeah. well. And it's 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 like this rah, rah, rah. But what you're saying is have those little tiny steps. Mm-hmm. And I call them little wins. Right. When you start seeing these wins, because oftentimes in, when people talk to me about getting motivated or I think about getting motivated, it's like a big goal I'm going to accomplish. It's too much. It's too much. Mm-hmm. And then you fall off. I'm going to lose 50 pounds in two months. It's overwhelming. Yeah. And, and And because the goal is too big, it's unachievable. Yeah. Our brains aren't ready for it. And if your brain isn't wrapped around your success and believing that you're going to have this success, it's not going to happen. Right. So we teach our brains the little successes, you know, that little the little things that make us happy, that just reward showing up, just reward, you know, um, anything that you can grasp on to. And those little tiny things build up to the success that happens. And and so the motivate I get motivation's a g- good thing and blah blah blah. But I it, but it's not what makes the change. It doesn't cause change. Yeah. Yes. So if you had one tip for our listeners, let's say they're struggling to with a setback or they're trying to make a come, they want to make a comeback, and they're just in a place that is not very healthy. What would you say to them? To find something that makes them happy. And think that. And when they think negative things, don't think those, like change the voice. I mean, I actually believe in you can change the voice in in the internal dialogue um, where if you wake up in the morning, you don't want to get out of bed. Mm -hmm. um, What do you do? Say, I'm a rock star. I'm jumping up. Like whatever it is, like if you drink too much and you wake up with a hangover, I enjoyed that bottle of wine. I loved it. (laughs) And I'm, you know, it was great. Instead of saying, oh, God, I've just changed those little, little things that when, when you notice when you say negative things to yourself. Yes. And then well, see that. And that's big. Notice the uh, negative. Yeah, exactly. Talk. That's the first step. Yeah. yeah. No, notice the negative talk and then literally change it and practice yeah. that positive yeah. talk. And, and that fits exactly in with what Mel is saying. Absolutely. Let's say you catch a negative thought. You go five, four, three, two, exactly. one, change it. Boom. Yep. Yep. I love it. Well, congratulations. Thank you. I, I'm really I'm so impressed with what you're doing and, and the turnaround that you've made. And um, the fitness, I mean, I'm a huge fan of fitness. I've been working out all my life. And the more that we can empower people to be fit, not just not just physically, but mentally and emotionally, that'll make all the difference. Absolutely. And I just wanted to mention um, yeah. Rich Dad, Poor Dad was the first book I ever read um, that was like financial coaching, business um, inspirational. Dadradio.com. I'd like to thank our two guests today. Fabulous, fabulous women. Mel Robbins. She is the author of the book, The Five Second Rule, Transform Your Life, Work, and Confidence with Everyday Courage. Highly recommend that book, The Five Second Rule. The moment you have an instinct to act on a goal, you count five, four, three, two, one, and you physically move or your brain will stop you. That's what she says. Five, four, three, two, one, and then physically move. That's the five second rule. She's also a speaker, TV personality and coach. And her TED talk is how to stop screwing yourself over. Sounds pretty fascinating. And she has over 10 million viewers. Our other guest is Lauren Janai. She's entrepreneur and fitness expert. She is the co-founder of CrossFit, the fitness phenomenon. And she is the founder of a new business called Manifest. Her website, bemanifest.com. So thank you for all your questions. If you have a question and would like to ask it of me or of Robert, submit your questions to askrobert at richdadradio.com. Melissa, what is our first question? Our first question today comes from Brittany in New York. Favorite book, Rich Woman. Oh, Brittany, I love you. She says, Kim, I'm in my late 50s and I'm considering getting married for the third time. My question is, my future husband is, quote, old school and wants to manage all our money. He's also divorced and is paying alimony and child support. He's a successful business executive, but I'm concerned about all his financial responsibilities to his former wife. What's your advice on if I should merge my assets with his or perhaps not get married due to financial (laughs) reasons? Brittany, that's a heck of a question. (laughs) Okay, so if you know Rich Woman, the book, 
um, you know that I am not one to ever say to blindly let turn your money over to somebody else to manage. And I'm going to say this. If you have the even the thought or the instinct that something doesn't seem right, I'm always about you handling and being responsible for your money and at least knowing what you've got, where it is, how to grow it, all of that. So it might be it's time for a discussion, I'm thinking, maybe a discussion with your husband. And, you know, if even if he is old school, what would happen? Ask him, what would happen if something were to happen to him? Wouldn't he want you to be savvy around the money that you have? So, for example, for me and Robert, once I started understanding this whole game of money, once I started getting out there and doing some investing, even little small steps, as Mel and Lauren both said, take tiny steps, just take tiny steps. As soon as I started understanding it and I knew that I could be financially savvy, financially literate, and ideally financially independent, I found out I did not need Robert. I wanted Robert. It was a choice then. I, I wanted to be with Robert, but I didn't need to be with Robert. So maybe the question to ask yourself is, do you want to be with this gentleman or do you need to be with this gentleman financially? That would be my question. So I'm all about women being financially independent, about taking care of themselves financially. Whether you're married, whether you're single, doesn't matter, but it's up to you to be in control of your money. Next question, Melissa. Our next question comes from Michelle in Columbus, Ohio. Favorite book, It's Rising Time. Oh, I'm loving these women today. Thank you. She says, Kim, what is your advice for not listening to the negative people in your life who say you can't do it? I'm starting my own business, but I have friends and family who say I'm crazy to do so. I'm on the right path and I know it, but I keep hearing their negativity in my head. Help. Great question, Michelle. First of all, let me say this. The book I wrote, It's Rising Time, fits in perfectly with what we've been talking about today because I wrote It's Rising Time because I saw so many women, they would read a book or they would go to a seminar and they'd kind of get excited about this idea of financial independence, but then they wouldn't do anything. They came became somewhat paralyzed. So I'm going to put a little plug in here for Mel Robbins' book, The Five Second Rule, because what she's saying is, if you know you should be doing something, such as taking care of your finances, getting yourself into the world of investing, you count five, four, three, two, one, and you take action. Just take a tiny little step towards that goal and do that every day because that was the pur whole purpose behind its rising time was to get women to start taking action. That was, the, that was why I wrote the book. So to Michelle's point about negative people, listen, I made a decision years ago that I was going to get the negative people out of my life. And as I'm building a business, as I was investing, as I was doing a lot of crazy personal development work, I had all these people telling me why it's not going to work. You shouldn't do that. Go get a job. Go back to school. All these things that they were telling me, all these negative thoughts. Look, I had enough negative thoughts in my head. I had enough self-doubt. I had all those questions whether I could make it, whether I could succeed. Who the hell do I think I am taking on this big role? Da, 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 da. So I've got enough of the negativity in my own mind. I don't need those around me. So if those around you are being unsupportive of your ideas, then maybe it's best you look for like-minded people. Maybe look for groups of women who are doing what you want to do and lessen the time you spend with the people who are not supportive. Look, why would you want to be around people that don't support you having your dreams? I only want to be around those that support me, that encourage me, that ask me the tough questions, that push me to be better and to go beyond where I think I can go. So I would start, Michelle, surrounding yourself with people like that versus those that are going to pull you down. Next question, Melissa. Our next question comes from Abby in Knoxville, Tennessee. Favorite book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. She says, what is the one piece of advice you give for overcoming fear? I'm just so afraid of taking the first step of quitting my job and going out on my own. Abby, that's a great question. And that's very common. Fear is very, very common. I guess my first question would be, do you have to quit your job to go out on your new venture? Can you, as we often say, can you start a part-time business in your spare time on the weekends when you're not working? If there's something that you're very, very passionate about, you can certainly find the time to do that. As far as fear is concerned, we've been talking about it a lot today. You just take tiny, tiny steps. 
tiny steps, tiny wins. So for example, I talk to women and they say, you know, I want to be financially free. The rich woman formula is having more money coming in from your investments than is going out and living expenses. So I ask, how much money have you got coming in? Well, I have nothing coming in. Okay, then you need to start with a tiny, tiny step. Maybe it's read a book. Maybe it's make a phone call. Maybe it's go to a seminar. Take a tiny step every day towards your goal. And the more tiny steps you take, the more wins you have, the more successes you have, the less the fear. So a quick story on on my own fear is my very, my very, very first property that I bought, my little two-bedroom, one-bath house. I was scared to death because I had never done it before. I'd never bought a piece of investment property. And I looked for every reason why not to do it, and my little voice was screaming. And the problem was it was unknown. I didn't know. So I found out that my intelligence goes, when emotions go up, intelligence goes down. So what I needed to do is I needed to get some experience. I needed to get some knowledge. I needed to take tiny, tiny, tiny steps. So I did go through with that first property because I did all my homework. I took, I, I took a lot more time than probably was necessary, but I wanted to look and learn about everything possible so that when I made that decision, I had a good 